Hey everyone, today I'm finally going to review this set of Mimery watercolor that I have bought in Japan. This is a brand from Italy, it's made in Italy. And I bought this introductory set of six watercolor tubes. In today's video, I'm going to paint out some swatches, I'm going to create some color mixtures, and I'm going to show you some of the sketches that I have painted with these colors over the last few months. Let's take a look at the six colors that are included in this particular set. Permanent Yellow Lemon, Primary Red Magenta, Ultramarine Light, Raw Sienna, Burnt Umber, and lastly we have Permanent Green Deep. I only bought six colors to test them out. My Mary Blue, they have a total of 72 colors in their range and most of them are single pigment colors. So let's swatch out the colors. I have already squeezed the colors into this six pans on the left side. By the way, these colors, they are available in 15 ml tubes as well as in half pans. So these are some of the boxes that I have drawn so that I can paint the color swatches. I have divided each box into two so that I can compare Mimery Blue with White Nights. So on the left side, I'll be painting with Mimery Blue and let's start with Permanent Lemon Yellow. Fresh out of the tubes, the paint is very gluey and it's very easy to dissolve. So they have this very soft texture and when they dry, they still feel a bit gluey but they don't move anymore. So if you want to put them into pans to dry out, you can certainly do so. So let's paint this. And let's try and dilute this with some water. And now let's do the same for White Nights. This is not a very fair comparison because I cannot remember the exact pigments that are used here. I just want to compare equivalent looking colors. This is some uh, lemon yellow, if I am not wrong, and this is opaque compared to my Marie's Blue's uh, version. So when you have an opaque yellow like this, any colors that you mix with it, it's going to be affected by the opacity as well. So for example, if you have green, if you have orange, they are also going to look opaque. The next color is primary red, PV19. Can you see how gooey this color is? I actually have other primary reds as well that are also using PV19. This color is quite intense, quite strong. You know what? Let me use the Daniel Smith uh, PV19 instead, which is the Queen Red. This is the PV19 that I use very often. Next, we have Ultramarine Light. And this is the Ultramarine from White Knights. And now we have Permanent Deep Green. This is a mixture of two pigments, PY175 and PG7. PG7 is Halo Green and PY175 is the yellow that you saw earlier. So this particular color, it's a bit more yellowish compared to thalo blue, sorry, compared to thalo green, which is a much darker and more intense color. This is where I want to switch over to using Daniel Smith thalo green. And now we have raw sienna. This is quite transparent, but I can see that um, it has some levels of opacity. And now let's switch over to using the White Knights version. I'm not sure if this is raw sienna or yellow ochre. So let's just try and paint this out. Now this version is quite weak. Oops. So I really need to mix, uh, get the pigment out. This looks like a yellow ochre to me. 
and lastly we have burnt umber this is white knight's burnt umber they are both pbr7 and as you can see they look a bit different white knight's version has more granulation both are quite transparent the colors are almost dry let's take a closer look at them so mimary blue permanent lemon yellow this is more transparent compared to the cadmium lemon of white knights most cadmium pins they are opaque and opaque pins they are not good for mixing so um, the advantage would go to the permanent lemon yellow i'm going to test this out for mixing later on with other primary colors so the next color we have is mimary blue primary red pv19 this is Daniel Smith's version of PV19 from the Queen of Crydon Red. Uh, my color again is a bit contaminated. Let me show you the real color of Queen of Crydon Red. This is how Daniel Smith's Queen of Crydon Red should actually look like. It's very intense compared to this swatch that I just painted out. This is definitely contaminated. This looks a bit more like magenta instead. And I also want to show you Crinochronon Rose, which is more pinkish. This is also PV19. And it looks a bit closer to My Marie Blue's PV19, which is also a bit pinkish. This is Permanent Green Deep. I believe they put a lot of yellow. So this is a pretty yellowish green, and it looks a bit unnatural. So you must uh, definitely add some neutralizing color to sort of dial it down to make it more natural if you want to paint trees or greens or vegetation with this color and this is pg7 next we have raw sienna versus yellow ochre from white knights this is a bit warmer compared to this this is a bit yellowish this is cleaner and this has some granulation but if you dilute them, they look pretty much uh, similar. And the last color is Burnt Umber. Now when they are both dry, they look actually quite similar. Maybe the White Knights version, it has slightly more granulation. But other than that, I think they look pretty similar. The color swatches, they look fine. Perhaps they are a little bit less intense compared to other brands that I have used. Sometimes the paper matters as well, but in this case, I'm using Fabriano Studio 25% cotton paper. And I've tested with other brands, the colors uh, from other brands, they are very strong, very vibrant. But for Mimery Blue, I feel that they are a bit dulled down. So let's uh, try and create some secondary colors with this color selection that I have here. Let's try and create a bright orange. So Let's use raw sienna. If I use lemon yellow, the orange will look a bit dead. So this is raw sienna and let's try and add some PV19 to it. So let's uh, mix this up and see if, I, if we can get a nice warm orange. It's definitely very difficult to get that bright orange. This is lemon yellow with primary red I can get an orange definitely but not as strong as vibrant compared to let's say a new gumbosh so this is the brightest orange I can get just for comparison purposes I'm going to show you new gumbosh from Daniel Smith I'm not going to mix any reds to this and this orange it's a really very intense very bright if I'm going to add a red to it it's going to appear a bit warmer just for comparison purposes I have painted Daniel Smith's new gumbosh here on this side on its own it's a pretty bright warm yellow or orange compared to this mixture from Mimery Blue and when I add Queen Crydon red to new gumbosh I get a nice a warm orange especially around this area here but this mixture, this orange here with lemon yellow and primary red from Mimery Blue, it definitely looks a bit dulled down. It's not as intense compared to um, Daniel Smith's version. 
For the raw sienna and primary red mixture, you can get some very nice uh, flesh tones or skin tones. If you want pinks as well, you can get some lovely pinks if you add a bit more water or if you add a tiny bit of raw sienna to the primary red. And now let's try to mix some greens with the ultramarine. So this is lemon yellow from my Mary blue. Let's add a bit of ultramarine. And this is what we can get. Let's make this a bit brighter by adding a bit more yellow. It's a bit patchy because of um, the way I'm painting. And let's compare it to the green that is included with this particular set. So this is definitely a bit unnatural. I'm going to add some red to it to sort of dull it down. So I'm going to add the primary red to it. It looks slightly better, more usable when it comes to painting uh, foliages and trees. And now let's use um, ultramarine and mix it with primary red to see if we can get some sort of purple going on. Let me try and use more pigment to see how intense this color can be. And now let's try and mix some grease. And now let's try and mix some greys. I'm going to use ultramarine and burnt umber. So this is ultramarine and burnt umber. You can get a really dark mixture. You can always get a black if you really use a lot of pigment, which I'm going to do so right now. I'm just going to use a lot of paint, a lot of pigment. So this is how it looks like. And let's dilute this and take a look at how it looks like when it's diluted. And lastly, let's use the three primary colors, yellow, blue and red to mix a gray. And this is what I get. Let me add a bit of blue to it to shift the colors around. Maybe a bit of red. Let's take a look at the other secondary colors that I have here. So for this green, I use permanent lemon yellow mixed with ultramarine light. This is a cool yellow and warm blue mixture. So the green that we can get is a bit muted. It is not as bright or as clean compared to a cool yellow and a cool blue like phthalo blue. So this is a bit muted and I can sort of feel that the intensity, the vibrancy is not that strong as well. And for the mixtures here, I use permanent green dip mixed with a little bit of primary red. And again, this is a rather warm green. It's also, it's also a bit muted as well. So we are not able to get really bright and clean greens. If I were to use this uh, green, well, it's quite bright, it's clean, but it's a bit unnatural. So I need to add some colors to sort of neutralize it. And when I add red to it, it becomes a bit dull like this. The other secondary color that I have is purple. This is mixed with ultramarine light and primary red. And it looks something like this. This purple is not as vibrant compared to other purples that I have seen but I think it's good enough. I added a lot of red here that's why it looks a bit more purplish. Here it's a bit more blue and this is ultramarine light. There is some texture, some granulation but not very obvious. For the grey tones, I use my usual combination of ultramarine with an earth tone and in this case the earth tone is burnt umber, so this is the grey I can get. Usually when you mix ultramarine, which is a granulating paint, with an earth tone, which is another granulating paint, you should be able to see a lot of texture, a lot of granulation. But here in this case, it looks like the granulation 
it's not very obvious in fact I think the colors are quite flat so it's quite uh, unusual for an ultramarine and an earth tone mixture to look like this and this is the great one that I managed to get when I mix the three primary colors together it's actually not easy to get uh, tones like this let me show you some of the sketches that I have painted with Mimery Blue. So this is a pencil sketch painted with the colors. I do feel that the colors, they are not as intense or as vibrant as they can be, especially when compared to other brands. The paper does play a part as well, as mentioned earlier. And this paper, it's bit creamy so it's off white so that affects the vibrancy as well here's another sketchbook with brighter and whiter paper here the colors they appear a bit muted as well not as vibrant compared to other brands that I have used I was able to get more vibrant colors here because I use a bit more paint but again not as strong compared to other brands and this is the brightest orange I can get for these roofs. For the grey areas here, I use ultramarine and burnt umber. I'm able to get uh, quite dark uh, values here, so that's great. But overall, um, I do not have a lot of texture. And that's because most of the colors in that six tube set, they are not granulating. The colors for this sketch is brighter because I use raw sienna straight from the tube without a lot of mixing. For the dark areas, it's ultramarine with burnt umber again. For the brown areas, it's burnt umber. For the greens, it's mostly um, the permanent green dip with some ultramarine added to make it look a bit darker. The colors appear brighter when you do not mix them a lot, but once you start mixing, colors they start to dull down uh, pretty quickly this is also painted with mimery blue as well as this one this um, appears to be a bit more vibrant because again I did not mix the colors a lot I sort of used them straight from the tube especially the raw sienna and the reds and the ultramarine that's why the colors they uh, pop up a bit more after using Mimery for a few weeks, painting all those sketches and looking at them now, and also looking at the color swatches and the color mixtures, I really don't feel any excitement about them. I have read a lot of positive reviews about them online and that's the main reason why I went out to buy them. Um, but looking at the color swatches, looking at all the sketches that I have painted with them. I'm not really impressed by the quality that I'm looking at. The quality that so many reviews have talked positively about. I'm just not seeing that here. I mean as color swatches they look fine but when I use them to paint my sketches I don't really feel the excitement uh, especially compared to other brands that I have used before. For example, when I first tested Daniel Smith or when I first used Mission Go watercolors, straight away, immediately I can tell that those are quality paints the moment I laid down the first wash on the paper. But here with the first sketch that I painted with Mimery Blue, I had a bad feeling about it. And uh, that feeling never went away, even a few months uh, later. Another reason why vibrancy is affected is because of the color selection in this particular set. So with a cool yellow, a cool red and this raw sienna, I wasn't able to get a very bright orange, a very bright uh, secondary color like orange. And with cool yellow and warm blue, I wasn't able to get a very bright yellow green, the type of green that you can get with lemon yellow and phthalo blue because there is no phthalo blue. And with this particular green, it's a bit unnatural and when you add other colors to neutralize it, the green becomes a bit dull again. So I guess the only color that works well is purple, which is uh, from 
PV19 and PB29, but purple is not a color that I use very often. So the quality of the paint as well as the color selection, they matter a lot when it comes to producing very vibrant colors. Anyway, this is just my personal opinion about these colors. You can check out other reviews online. There are many. And recently I have watched a video from Steve Michel from Mine of Watercolor. He has just bought a set of Mimory Blue. So you may want to wait for his review. I mean, he's a very good painter, so he may be able to create some magic out of the paint. I also recommend you to check out Dennis Soden's review for Mimory Blue. She runs the YouTube channel in liquid watercolor. And finally, you can also check out Jim Blundell's review as well. She has painted all the color swatches for Mimory Blue on her blog. I will put all those links in the video description below so that you can uh, visit them and do more research on these colors. So that's all for my review today. Thanks for watching. I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And see you in the next video. Bye.